What is going on, y'all? It is Far Gas here. Hopefully, you're having a great and wonderful day out there in the wasteland, friends. Today, we're going to be talking about mistakes that players make in Fallout 76, and you need to watch out for these. So, y'all sit back, relax, and let's talk about it. The first mistake that I see players make in Fallout 76 is joining up on a server and not joining or creating a public team while roaming the wasteland. Now, the casual public team, in my opinion, is the best to create or to join while you're playing Fallout 76 because this is going to give you a boost to your intellect. And now, while boosting your intellect is great, it will also allow you to fast travel to your team and their camps for free and it'll also give you shared xp if you are close enough to your teammates at events and this includes even if you don't tag the enemy so you'll get about half of the xp rewards for your teammates taking the enemy out and you not even tagging it the next thing that i notice in fallout 76 is that players will not join up to public events around the wasteland and yes this even includes events like the scorch beast queen fight where a level 20 or a level 10 should not be at but if you're on a public team you can absolutely get some great rewards from this event. Now, I like to explore Appalachia like every other vault dweller, but when I see a world event notification pop up on the right-hand side of my screen, I make sure to open my map up and fast travel to that location because this is going to be a great way for you to earn XP, caps, items to scrap, and if the event has an exclamation mark in the symbol, that is a great way to earn treasury notes and legendary cores. And the reason that you would want legendary cores is that it is essential for crafting legendary armor and weapons out there in the wasteland. And now if you don't know what you're going to be using treasury notes for in Fallout 76, make sure to check this video out in the description below that we did in collaboration with Duchess Flames going over a guide for the raider and settler reputation. And now speaking of joining up to public events out there in the wasteland, do not start the event as soon as you arrive. Make sure that when you fast travel to events in the wasteland it is best to let members from the server show up because you don't want to instantly start the event and then it failed because no one had the chance to show up. This isn't good for you and this isn't good for the server. Now there are some quirks to this system because if you fast travel to the event, spin the wheel, you'll sometimes land on the pad that starts the event. So with that event, make sure to just fast travel to the Nuka World on tour and then walk over to the tent. And now when you see this glorious event called eviction notice pop up, make sure that when you fast travel there, you don't instantly check out the outpost because that is going to start the timer to fix the rad scrubber. So it's best to stay in place or walk along this fence line right here but friends do not check out that outpost instantly let other members from the server show up now one big thing that i see players do while waiting for other vault dwellers to show up to an event is to crouch down and you should not be crouching down because this is going to hide you off the map and the problem with hiding yourself while waiting on other vault dwellers to join an event is that if a player scrolls over that event and does not see anyone on the map they are more likely not to join that event and then you're just going to be sitting there wondering why no other vault dweller has joined that event that you've been waiting three minutes to start. If you built a camp in Fallout 76 and want to sell some of your wares like Khajiit's do, but no one's coming by to check out your camp or your vendor, I want you to open up your map and then click on your camp icon because by default, the public icon is turned off. I want you to turn this on and that it has circles coming around your camp because this way players out there in the wasteland will be able to see your camp and visit your vendor. This next one is one that I think everyone needs to hear and be reminded about. It is about showing respect to other vault dwellers out there in the wasteland land and not overusing explosive weapons or flashy weapons at public events. Now one thing that I would love to see Bethesda R011 add into the game is a setting where we could turn off the explosive effects or very much limit the explosive effects while we're out in the wastelands of Appalachia exploring or at a public event. And now we did get a setting to turn off the camera shake so here's to fingers crossed that we're going to get a settings to be able to limit or turn off the explosive effects in Fallout 76. And now I get it it's a lot of fun to use a two shot auto grenade launcher the new weapon creator Mater or even a fat man out there in the wasteland but remember at these public events it's not just you there and remember the golden rule friends and now since we're talking about things not to do at public events in fallout 76 let's talk about the event rad rumble and why no one should be going past the turret unless you are gathering ore during this event in fallout 76 and now if you go past the turrets during a rad rumble it will mess with the spawn location of the enemies which means that the enemies might get confused and not come up at all or maybe take a little bit of a longer time coming up and this means that while everyone loves Rad Rumble for the XP game, you will effectively not be getting as much XP from that side of the event, hurting yourself and other vault dwellers at this event. And now I see a lot of people standing around and tagging enemies to get XP, but someone needs to go down and get the ore because as you get ore and it gets deposited, the level goes up on this event, which means bigger enemies and more XP will be spawning from these enemies. And friends, this also gives you the chance at getting a rare drop for this event are even winning the wasteland lottery 
which includes a few highly rare and sought after items in the wastelands of Appalachia. And now as you're leveling up in Fallout 76, don't worry about scrapping the perk cards that you get until you know more about the game and how the legendary perk card system works because you would hate to get rid of something and then realize that you just got rid of a card that you're going to need in a few levels or that you just got rid of an animated perk card. And now if you don't know what an animated perk card is or how to acquire an animated perk card, make sure to check this video out in the description or at the tail end of the video. And now something that I learned from Tonic last year is about not letting my stash box get filled up with modded weapons and weighing my stash box down. If you don't know who Tonic is, they are a great content creator and we'll have a link to their channel in the description below. Now, as you're modding weapons in Fallout 76, the weight of the weapon is going to get up. So if you're just going to be putting a weapon inside of your stash box, make sure to unmod that weapon. And one thing that I would love to see in the future for Fallout 76 from Bethesda R011 is the ability to gut a weapon. That way it has 90% reduced weight on it that way if we just want to show that weapon off it's not taking up a lot of space in our stash box another mistake that i see players make in fallout 76 is picking up just loose power armor pieces and not attaching them to a power armor chassis before putting them into their stash and now the reason that you would want to attach these loose pieces of power armor to that chassis is whether the power armor chassis has anything on it or completely full it still weighs 10 pounds and if you look at how much a single power armor piece weighs then putting all of this onto a chassis is going to save you a lot of stash weight and now something that I see in my live streams is players commenting about what legendary weapons or armor pieces they should make at level 30. Now the biggest thing about this is that the level cap on armor and weapons is level 50 so you shouldn't be worried about making legendary armor or weapons until you at least hit level 50. Just make sure to pick up the legendary item off of the legendary enemy as you explore the wasteland and make sure to check out a player's camp because you never know what you're going to find in that player's vendor. And now while it may not be something that you're used to in other video games, the community that surrounds rounds fallout 76 is absolutely amazing and now in saying that you might see a high level vault dweller come up to you and drop something on the ground and shoot at it or even emote and a little gift symbol will pop up that is because that player is giving you what's inside of that bag and also there are a lot of vault dwellers that use the area chat so don't be afraid to get on the mic and respectfully ask someone to make you something and now it took me a long time in fallout 76 to make a second character but no matter if you have fallout first or not remember to start a second character character in Fallout 76 because you can mule items between characters and that is a great way to clear up some stash space while playing and if you want to know how to mule with or without Fallout first make sure to check this video out right here in the description below where we go over how to do that. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to check this video out and let me know in the comment section below about mistakes that you've made or you've seen other players make out there in the wasteland so other vault dwellers can stay away from it. Seriously, y'all have a great and wonderful day out there in the wasteland. Thanks so much to the channel members for the continued support. And again, if you hadn't seen the animated perk card video where we talk about what they are, how to get them and why they're so important, then make sure to check this video out right here. Y'all have a great and wonderful day. Peace. Love you.